phenomenon, inquiry, 5E, and GSS. If the sound of these words has you wanting to go back into a time machine when teaching science was a little bit simpler, then stick with me. Sit down, find a nice comfortable position, maybe even grab a beverage of choice because I'm ready to help you see that this new way of teaching science really is not that scary. And I'm gonna try and uncomplicate it all for you. I'm gonna be taking the 5E model and breaking it down to show you that each particular part actually is not as complicated as it may seem. And you might find that you actually enjoy science a little more by using the 5E model. And I know your students will enjoy it also. So let's go ahead and let's dive into what the 5E model is. The basic overview of the 5E model. The 5E model is just an inquiry-based approach to teaching science. It's a way to get students really engaged with the science topic that they're learning. Instead of just sitting back and memorizing vocabulary, it's designed so that students actually take more ownership of their learning and the teacher, instead of being there telling the students what to learn, how to learn it, instead the teacher gets to actually sit back and have the students do all that heavy learning. The teacher no longer has to spend hours and hours of time figuring out exactly what they want the students to know in what order. Instead, the students are gonna be guiding and they're gonna be coming up with their ideas. So there's five parts to explore, explain, extend, and evaluate. And it's important that all five of these steps are followed. We don't want to miss anything. If you miss something, if you miss a step because of time, you're actually doing the students a disservice because they don't have time to actually process all the learning that is happening. Now, the 5E model is not designed to happen in one day. In fact, it should take usually about two to three weeks to do a 5E model. So that means that not every unit that you do or every topic needs to be done in the 5E model, especially if you're doing a topic that uh, you just need to give these students some basic information, some uh, background knowledge then you wouldn't do a full 5E model on that one. For example, in middle school, right? In middle school, nowhere is there a standard on atoms or the periodic table. Instead, it goes into chemical reactions and it goes into compounds and simple and extended structures. However, as science teachers, we know that it is gonna be very difficult for us to help the students understand and go deep into chemical reactions, balancing equations, conservation of mass, and these simple and extended structures without giving that basic foundation of atoms and the periodic table. We're gonna to have to build that in. So when we're teaching atoms and the periodic table, we're not gonna spend a whole week, two weeks doing that. It's not part of the standards, but we still need to hit it. So we're not gonna use the 5E model for that. We're gonna save that for our actual standards. So let's go ahead and look at each part of our 5E model. First, it starts with engage. And engage should not take a whole entire class period. I mean, for every once in a while it can, but the purpose of the engage is to get the students excited and interested in the topic. It gets them wondering and questioning and taking what they know and then seeing if they can figure things out. And that's why phenomenon is usually part of the engage process. But it doesn't have to be that complicated. You could do a quick demonstration and have the students write down observations of what they're seeing, then have them write down what their one questions they have, what they wanna know, 
and then have them kind of see if they can explain what they're seeing. And that's the whole purpose of the gauge. It's to get the students thinking, it's to get the students observing, and to get the students questioning their environment, questioning what they're seeing. An example of a great engage could be if you're doing thermal energy transfer to go ahead and show a short video on the triple point phenomenon where the students will watch a substance boiling and freezing at the same time. Now that is one of the, one of my favorite ones to show because my students, you know, I'll ask them before, can you, can you freeze and boil at the same time? And they're like, no. How do you freeze things? You put it in the freezer. How do you boil things? You put it on the stove, you add heat. Well, those are two different extremes. One, you are removing heat, put it in the freezer. When you're adding heat, you're putting it on a stove. And so when they get to this video, it blows their mind. They're like, wait a minute, what is going on? So they're watching this, they're observing, they're seeing things freeze, they're th seeing it boil, and they're seeing it happening at the, first, the same time. So then they're asking all these questions. How is this occurring? What is it going on? What is this liquid? And that gets them started. And it's a short, quick thing. You know, most times engage should be about 10 minutes. Do a quick demonstration, maybe show them a video that will lead into their topic. And it's important that when you do choose your phenomenon, it really does make them question and make them interested in the actual topic that they're gonna be learning, the actual standard. There are some awesome phenomenon videos out there that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yet I won't show them to my students for an engaged part because even though it's awesome and cool, it's not gonna get them thinking about the standard that they're gonna be investigating and they're gonna be learning about. Because one thing you do wanna remember is in the engage, at the very end, you wanna come back to whatever it is you did, come back to that demonstration, come back to that video, and you want to then have the students with all this new knowledge, see if they can now tell you what's happening and why. So that's engage. From there, we go into the explore part. Now, you probably have some amazing science investigations, some labs, right, where after they, you've taught them the information, then they're gonna do a lab. So with the explore phase, just reverse that. Instead, give them that lab first. Make it more of an inquiry. It can be a guided inquiry where you're having the students, you know, follow some steps, but have them look at their observations. Have them gather their data. Have them figure out what they're seeing and why and make sense of it. That's what that's all about. The explore part is that inquiry. It's taking our labs, our investigations, and giving it to the students first. So that way they can start seeing what is going on. What am I observing? I'm doing this, and these, this is what I'm seeing. Why? Why is this happening? And they start to come up with their own explanations their own reasoning, maybe coming up with their own definitions. This is a great time for them to develop their own definitions of what a word means. What does it mean to freeze? What does it mean to boil? What is really going on? What are you seeing? What is happening? Why is this occurring, right? The explore part is perfect also for um, a science station. Take out the teacher-led part, and just have the group and the online, maybe have them doing two different activities, two different investigations, one as a group and one online, where again, they're in the concept, they're building their knowledge during this time. This is not the time to correct the students. This is not the time to go in and tell the students all your knowledge, right? This is the time for them to investigate. So that's what the explore part is. It's them investigating. Your job is just to go around and you know, guide them in their investigation by just probing them with questions. What are you seeing? Why do you think you're seeing that? What's going on? You know, Why is this happening? So you're just going around and probing the questions and having the students come up with their 
own information, their own reasoning, their own definitions. From the explore, now you go into the explain phase. So in the explain phase, that's when the students are putting what they're seeing to the actual concept. You could have them first come together and talk with each other about what they saw during that explore phase, give them the actual you know, vocabulary words and have them come up with their own ideas and explanation. This is also a perfect opportunity for the flipped lessons to occur. Instead of taking time, giving them that information in class and doing a lecture, this is when it's a great time to have them then watch the video on the concept so they can see, okay, so this is what's, this is what I'm seeing. And they can then take what they thought was happening during the explore part and compare it to the actual information of the concept, the topic to see, okay, am I on the right track? Um, do I need anything clarified? Explain is the time to actually clarify stuff. So after you're giving them the information, they're learning it either through the flipped lesson or through a lecture or the textbook, then coming back and seeing if they actually understand it. But you're only focusing on one small part, one small example. So for example, if you're teaching um, simple versus extended structures, you might just talk about one simple structure, one extended structure, maybe just uh, sodium chloride, right? And how it's gotten patterns. And that's what you're doing the, during the explain. It's only focusing on one. From there, from the explain, now you want the students to extend their knowledge, to go beyond that one example, to go beyond um, that one explanation, and now go farther. Maybe look at other examples, do another investigation what they're seeing. So like for chemical reactions, you might have them do like maybe two uh, chemical reactions during the explore phase where they're seeing, you know, they're trying to figure out if a chemical reaction occurs and maybe have one being a physical change and one being a chemical change, right? Then you get into the explain phase and you go over then, okay, what are the requirements for a chemical reaction to occur? What are we looking at? What is our evidence that we need to have? Then in the extend phase, maybe have two more activities, two more experiments that they're going into. And again, one of them could be a physical change. Another one is a chemical change. And now they have to explain, okay, this one's physical because I saw this, or I saw a color change, but maybe it was like red and blue food coloring. So you got purple, which is something that would naturally occur when you mix paint together. And then have another one where, okay, they're seeing different colors, they're seeing precipitates, they're seeing the temperature rise, right? So having them do those and everything they've been learning so far, and they're going beyond moving it into another way. It's also a great time where you can once again go in there and check, are there still some misconceptions happening? Are they getting it? Can they take what I've take what they've shown them here in this example? Can they now do it with a different example? Right? And the last part then gives us into the evaluate. So with the evaluate, this is not necessarily just your unit test. Your unit test can be part of the evaluate phase, but evaluate is not just a multiple choice test. They need to do some type of performance assessment. They need to show and demonstrate that they actually understand it. So in the evaluate, you could come back to that engaged demonstration, come back and, and see can they now explain that phenomenon they saw in the very beginning of the unit? Can they take that information and maybe have them apply it to another real world situation perhaps? So the evaluate part is where you're gonna have your summative. The rest of the 5E should all just be formatives, checks for understanding. But the main part, the main importance of the evaluate stage is to see if the students can actually apply that information they've been learning. Offer them a performance assessment where they have to evaluate or create something using all of their knowledge. Again, evaluate is that N summative part. It's not the unit test alone. It is the can they now apply that information. 
Can they do that higher level faking? Do they really understand? This is where the students are showing you the information. So I hope that helped you understand the 5E, e, just a simple breakdown. I'll be coming back and focusing on each particular part, giving you examples of exactly what you can do for those different parts to help you really, again, understand that you're probably already doing a lot of these things. It's just tweaking it a bit so that it becomes more inquiry and student focused where the students are doing all that heavy lifting and you are more sitting back and just guiding them. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.